If it looks like I'm dying or sounds like I'm dying, I am. We're all dying. Allergies suck. A quick dive into music theory. So, Robert, you were asking questions basically about the music staff and key signatures. I'm sure that you'd know that the music staff is basically just a way to visually represent music that you're going to play. But here's my best attempt to explain your questions while my body attacks harmless particles of dust that trees make so that they can make more trees or something. I don't, I don't know. So the best way to understand music theory for me is with a piano because... It also just visually lays out everything just like the music staff. Unlike a trumpet or a flute, you can assign each line or space on a staff to a specific key on the piano. Moving up the staff means that you're moving to the right on the piano. I won't get too deep into the bass and the treble clef, but essentially they just start on different notes. They're looking at two different sections on the piano. Most low instruments play the bass clef, like the cello or the tuba, just because it makes their music easier to read. The notes they normally play would be really low on the treble clef. Same with bass singers, I would assume. Now if you make a note flat or sharp, you're just moving it a half step. What is a half step? Well. If you look at the piano at note A, either one of the keys A, you'll notice that the black keys touching it on both sides have an A with another symbol. Those are the flat and the sharp keys. And they feel immensely judged by you saying that they don't sound good. A flat means you're lowering A by a half step, and A sharp means that you're raising it by a half step. As another example, look at the C in the middle. If you raise it by a half step, you get C sharp on a black key, but uh oh, there's no black key to its left. The closest note to its left is a white key, but that's okay, we can just call that C flat too. You can even have multiple flats or sharps. If you have a C flat flat, that's just a B flat. You can also technically have a flat sharp, but the only people who would do that are assholes. You'll notice that all the black keys and some of the white keys have multiple names. That might seem kind of dumb, but it helps immensely when we're reading music or doing music theory. Now, you might think I don't have an answer for why music sounds good, but I actually kind of do. Those symbols next to the treble and bass claps you were talking about are a way to show what key you're in. Now, being able to know what key you're in by looking at the symbols is not something I'm going to go into, but I will tell you how to play any key's scale on the piano, which will help you know what notes are in a specific key. If you start on any note, like start on the note C right now, you play that note and you move up a whole step forward, which is just two half steps. You play that note, then take a whole step, play that note, then a half step, play that note, then a whole, 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 and finally a half. That is the key of that note. You'll know that you did it right if you didn't hit any black keys and the last note that you hit was C. You can do this with any note, even any of the black notes. Use that pattern to find out what notes are in the key, and you can make good sounding music if you hit the notes within that key. Kind of. Mm, that's the majority of happy western music at least. The flats and sharps next to the clef are just telling you what key you're in, or in another phrasing, what notes you'll be hitting for the piece. As for the words you don't understand, there's a lot of jargon in music. I'd suggest just paying attention to the words and looking them up after practice. Most of the times, the words just have to do with the way that you're supposed to be singing. As for what I want to learn, the answer is pretty much everything. I've had an issue throughout most of my life knowing exactly what to put my time and energy into. I have the ability to be interested in pretty much anything, and usually what I'm interested in at the moment is dictated by the people around me because I want to be able to relate to them. I've even come up with some things that I've basically forced myself to not learn anything about. If I had to choose one thing though that I'm currently not doing and that I would choose above anything else, I would probably try to get better at music. Maybe it's just on my mind from the first part of the video, or maybe that's the reason that I would even want to go into a 32 minute ramble on music theory. I might also say another language, but music is something that's been a real constant in my life. It's one of the things that I've been interested in without anyone else's influence on me. It's something that I'm not currently working on because I don't really have the space or the accessibility to other people to ensemble with. And sure, I try to keep up with music and listen to the newest albums, but it's different from playing music or doing music theory, two things which I immensely enjoy. I think it's my turn to come up with a question. Um, I honestly don't know. I think it might be. So if it is, then just talk about the worst day that you guys have had in your life. Mine is today. Um... Hey, so me from 
the future, um, I totally realized that I didn't answer the actual question, and also my question to you guys was bad, and I realized that it is actually my turn to do the question. Um, so m my answer, uh, I guess more specifically with the music would be um, that I'd like to learn piano because I kind of just said something that I already know but I would like to get better at. I don't know piano at all. Um, that's something that I would like to learn um, because it does help with music theory and it is something that I've been interested in um, doing. Um, and my actual question to you guys, so I just, um, this is a few hours after I recorded the video, um, and in that time I watched The Fault in My Stars to, um, just relax and not have to think about anything, um, and so that got me thinking about the death of the author, the idea that, um, when you read a book, the, or watch a movie or anything, you sh shouldn't take into account what the author thinks about it, and if there is an ambiguous ending um, in the text, then there really isn't anything that the author should be able to say about that. Um, an example of that would be what J.K. Rowling is doing now. She is uh, an example of why people think the death of the author should be uh, implemented in most cases. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to know your thoughts on that idea, I guess. Yeah.